Hello, welcome back to Call Clutter Fairy, where I help you get clutter free so that you can live stress free. Did you notice I had new music? If you're returning, please let me know what you think about the new song. But if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please give that subscribe button a click and the notification bell. What this does is it tells you when new videos come up, but it also tells YouTube what content you're interested in so that it can customize those recommendations for you. Last week, I worked on the foam core storage, and this week I did another one just for my office supplies. And as I mentioned last week, I made drawers. So that's kind of what we're going over today. I am going to show you how I made the drawers. Of course, I put my little pulls on it so that it matches. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. And this just slides into its little home. So I'll focus on how to make the drawer. Um, I'm gonna fast forward through most of the parts of cutting and gluing. I also did a download, again, just in case you are interested in this. This fits a standard bookcase size, um, and I just had it so that, uh, again, it holds my office supplies and the drawers are for the things that I don't want to be seen. So without further ado, let's go. So I'd heard from one of our subscribers, Mike, that you can get a square at the Dollar Tree. So check out your hardware section, see if they have something like this or a T, which is a long section here and it has a small little piece right here. But try and get something larger for these foam core pieces. Also, another thing that I saw that I thought was pretty amazing is I have been scouring these videos now about foam core storage. And like I said, there are a lot of them, but there are other ways to cut foam core that are extremely efficient. So I did some tests and I'm hoping that the screen will show but this cut is from an X-Acto knife and you could see it's pretty jagged. Now granted, this was a dull X-Acto knife and I was having a lot of a lot of trouble getting a good clean cut with this. So that's an X-Acto knife. This was a good box cutter and yeah, it's a perfect cut, but the box cutters are really dangerous because they glide so smoothly and so quickly you really risk cutting yourself and they do dull after about nine cuts. What I found another YouTuber suggest is using a serrated steak knife. And he said he just gets his in a four pack at the dollar store and then cuts with the steak knife. And you know what? He's right. It works really well. And if you rub your finger against this accidentally, you're not gonna get cut. I mean, if you give yourself a lot of force, yes. The steak knife cuts just as well. Give it a little force, run it through, and you've got a nice clean cut. So for safety, if you guys can find one of these that you have in a drawer already and you're, you don't mind giving up as a sacrifice to your steaks, uh, this is a great option for cutting the foam core really easily. So I'm not sure how many of you will benefit from this one. This is for a large section in my 30 inch bookcase that's behind me. I will have this as a download, but as I said, I'm not sure how many of you will have this exact need, but it will still give you an idea of how to cut them and place them together.
it took me about 45 minutes to make all of the cuts. I was going very slow and being very meticulous so that I didn't mess up. Here is the total waste from all five boards. So I feel pretty proud of that. Uh, I spent a lot of time laying the pieces out so I, I do think that I got the most out of it and I don't know that I really could have gotten any other big pieces out of the waste. So pretty good. Now I'm gonna save all of these pieces either for other crafts or like I, um, I might make a bunch of these skinny pieces to use as supports. So don't throw anything away until the project is all over. I, as I was completing each little section on my schematic, I was marking the pieces on the corner so it matched the piece on here and then just setting them aside so that when I go to assemble, it's not so confusing this time. So ev here's everything on sheet three, here's everything on sheet two, sheet one, so that this process should go easier when it comes to finding the pieces to assemble it. So I know the piece that you're the most excited about watching are the drawers. So let me get the pieces for the drawers. And on the sheets it says drawer bottom, drawer bottom two. So here's drawer bottom one and here's drawer bottom two. And then drawer right and drawer left. That's how that'll go. And this should be the front. And then over here we have drawer left and right. Yep, look at that. And drawer front. Yep, look at that. And I just love it when the pieces match together. Oh, you're a divider. You're not a drawer piece. See, fibber. Okay. So there's the drawer pieces. And this should be pretty quick to assemble. Another thing I do want to mention because I started off talking about this. The serrated knife does cut very cleanly. However, because mine was from the Dollar, Troy, uh, the dollar Store, it was, the handle became loose. Um, so the cuts, I don't know if you could see it wiggling. Anyway, uh, it wasn't safe anymore, so I stopped using it. So I do think a serrated knife would work, but I would recommend getting one that's actually strong and isn't going to break after a couple of pressurized cuts. So all I'm going to do is get my little glue gun. I designed my boxes so that all of the pieces go along the outside. So if you put it on the inside, you're going to be mad at me because as you could see, this piece is sticking out because I had it adjusted to go on the outside and accommodate the pieces that fit all along the outside of the bottom. And I did this because I wanted the most storage space on the inside. So I'm just going to glue my face and end on first. Trusty little glue gun. I was thinking, my glue gun puts out a lot of glue at one time. And I was thinking about getting the little tiny one that they actually have at the 99 cent store just to see if it puts out a smaller bead of glue because this is messy. And now that I've done one of these before, I'm not too worried about it being perfectly squared because once I get the other edges on there, it'll rectify itself. But I do want to make sure that it's as flush as possible without burning myself. One of the things I do think magical about hot glue is you can still adjust it after it does stick and it dries fast. I think that's that's just awesome. I'm going to give it a little extra pressure now that it's... All right, and then while that's drying, I'll go ahead and do the second bead of glue over here. Try and find the prettiest edge to be visible. Keep the ugly stuff down. Again, glue gun is so forgiving, so you can adjust it if it wasn't quite as flush as you wanted it to be. And now I can go ahead and do my edges. 
wanted to thank you all for the many, many comments that you provided on the last foam core storage that I made. Um, I, I do like reading them all. They are so helpful and I loved seeing the communication that each other's suggestions and asking questions. So keep that up. I did notice a couple people saying foam core is not an option for you, which I totally respect. I was just looking for something that was extremely inexpensive, uh, but sturdy. So if you wanna make this out of wood or cardboard, you're certainly welcome to do so. I just, again, was trying to find something super inexpensive and pretty easy to find. It's very forgiving. Once you put the glue down, you have a few seconds to go ahead and adjust it, which I really like. So that is the box. It is very sturdy. I can go ahead and put some things inside of it just to show. I've got my little knife, a stapler. We'll do my heavy little measuring tape and we'll do a full shipping. Um, so there you've got it. I'm, I'm gonna not hold it from the bottom so that you could see. It's holding all of that weight in there and the glue isn't even completely dry yet. So you guys, I think this is gonna be a very sturdy option for you. If you do have really heavy things in there like a lot of stamps or ribbons, things that are gonna have some weight to it, you can go ahead and strengthen and support the outsides. There are so many videos out there showing how to do that. Some people use push pins to go through. Other people use just the regular shipping tape to surround it. I also saw a gal who used this industrial shipping tape that had strings running through it. I think that's all fine. Um, the only thing is there's so many videos to go through. I kind of hate making you take all of that time. So if you're interested, I can put together a compilation video of the various ways to assemble these so that you can quickly choose which method works best for you before you assemble those. But the last thing I want to point out is the very cute decorative <laughs> element that you could put on there. You know I like decorating things just a little to make it look cute. These are in my Amazon store. That link is down below. The Amazon link does give me a tiny bit of financial support. So if you're interested in supporting me, this is a very easy way to do it without adding any additional cost to yourself. So when you go to my Amazon link below and shop for anything that you need, including things that I have in my store, I get about 30 cents per hundred dollars so it's not a lot but it does add up and I appreciate you guys supporting me welcome back we had a little technical difficulty as our battery died so I just charged it up a little bit let's see if we can get through the rest of this somewhat quickly so I think I left off showing that the next shelf would be where the drawers go um, I did discover that even though I've measured two, three, four times, somehow lining up that middle divider was just proving to be a little bit difficult. So instead, I'm just gonna line these up and put them towards the end. And then I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this support piece in the middle because for some reason, I can't do math today. <laughs> so the five and a half inch support is gonna go right in the middle here. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna eyeball it this time because like I said, I was having difficulties. So I've got it right in the middle and now I'm just gonna go through and glue the bottom. All right, let's hope that this works well. I'm a little nervous. I don't like eyeballing things when it's something like this. So I'm just trying to visually get it right in the middle. Oh, I think I did it. How about that? Coffee must have kicked in now. Okay, so I've got the middle one. Um, it does feel a little, right now it's a little wonky, but I haven't added the sides yet, and I also haven't added the second support yet. So it's really just a teeny tiny table that I'm putting two boxes on. But these boxes, this, the drawers feel really good. Um, I will still show you how to do some of the supports with the extra pieces left over. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the next layer up, which will be the top for me. But before I do that, I am going to add the three sections again so that I have a place to put my final storage. And then I will do, I will do the end. So 
ago. I'm doing, I said three, I meant two. So here we have these two pieces again, just like the first piece. And I think I absolutely am going to add just for stability. Yes, I am. I'm gonna go ahead and add two more support pieces just to give this a little bit more stability because as I'm moving it around, it just doesn't feel as sturdy as I would like it. So I'm gonna take these out, I'm gonna take these out. Now I have the top done. I'm gonna set this down. So this is my top. And then this is the bottom piece, but when I rest it up against here, I think you can see how it's kind of going to go. So my drawers would effectively be sliding in here and in here. So I will have open storage in these three bins and these three bins. So that's how this is looking, okay? And then after I make sure this is totally lined up and square, the last thing I'm going to do is put on my sides. Then I can do my little decorative handles. And at that point, it's done. You can choose to paint it. You can choose to cover it with contact paper. You can choose to cover it with scrapbook paper, wrapping paper. That is totally up to you. I'm choosing plain white just because I, again, I want it to blend in, but this is going to be for my extra office supplies and things. So let me grew the structure together now. All right, I'm going to, so now I'm ready to glue the side panel. I have a support here, which is going to be the bottom. So I'm gonna put some glue on there and then I'm going to put some glue on my score line. I don't know if you can ever see my score line, but glue here and then on the bottom panel and then it's going to get glued just like that. And then follow that little groove I made. and then make sure everything is as squared up as possible. God bless you, Foam Core. It is so nice, you guys. I love how you can uh, just tweak that little line of glue. Once you put it on there, you have a few seconds to make an adjustment, which is really nice. But Oh, that's gonna be super sturdy, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing to the outer edge so that I have that. And I'd already made my score line, so I'm just going to eyeball the bottom section so that I get some good contact there. I'm gonna burn myself. I hate glue gun burns. flip it over again so that I can line everything up super square and pretty. Make sure I've got pressure on the main lines of things. And there it is. These feet are to support these sections and then this one is to support this top part. Shaky. All right, here is the finished product. So I have it right next to my desk and it fit in so nicely. I'm really proud of how well it fits in. Um, I probably could have gone even taller, but I was worried because of how tight this is. I can't move the desk without moving the credenza, which means I have to, there was too much to move just to get access to this. So I wanted to make sure to have enough space that when I put it in, I had clearance to lift it up. So in retrospect, if I could do this over again, I probably would have made it bigger here and just put those last two spaces on at the very end. However, I think it looks good. Um, the only thing, this is sagging just a little. 
Um, so I might get a bigger piece of foam core. I just set one there. I might put a bigger piece there just to lift it up ever so slightly so that it's straight. But so far that is my only complaint about it. So the drawer pulls out and in this I can have all of my office supplies. Thankfully you know I go to the Dollar Tree all of the time and I get these lovely little Rubbermaid square um, organizers. So. Uh, if you are not familiar with that, check out my video on organizing with Dollar Tree supplies. But this allows me to have my business cards handy, my overflow, my little post-it notes, checkbooks, everything that I need without it being on my desk because it was on my desk and driving me crazy. Down here is all of my marketing supplies for when I mail things out to local clients. Um, and then I have my, again, I'm going to make a bigger piece here so that fits better, my tape, my stapler. I already I have extra room, which is awesome. The things that I grab most often are my planner. So I have my little Clutter Fairy planner, very easy to grab. These are my bills to pay, uh, and they were sitting on my desk as a reminder, so now I've got it here. And I might even make something funny, like, you know, you're good to go. Uh-oh, you need to pay bills. Holy crap, you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> So, uh, but this way I could see the bills and I can take care of them right away. And then I'm always reaching for these types of things. So again, it's not on my desk area, which I'm going to be so happy about. And the thing that I personally hate doing more than anything is my accounting when I have to balance everything out. So I can throw my receipts in here. They're safe. If I need to look something else up, I can get to it and then excuse me, then when I am ready to actually go through and double check against my statements and address this, whether it's business needs or personal needs, I know right where they're at. So I am really happy with this. So this was five sheets of foam core. So I made this custom insert for my bookcase for $5. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought and what you'll use this for if you make one yourself. And until then, I will see you next week. Bye.